Greetings, Genovias! Uninvited is pussy wet and good. No, wait, sorry, that came out wrong. Um, Uninvited is probably the world's finest micro budget horror movie about an evil cat killing dumb Americans. But only because Hell's Kitty exists. Ah! Look at this cover. We used to be a real country. We used to have giant floating cat heads that don't resemble the cat in the film, threatening to eat yachts that equally don't resemble the yacht in the film. This film is that special kind of terrible. They should have got its fame in the annals of bad filmmaking. It should have been talked about alongside Troll 2 or The Room. But instead, it's a drift in a sea of obscurity. To give you an idea of where this is coming from, this was directed by Graydon Clark, who made films like Satan's Sadist, Psychic Killer, Angel's Revenge, Satan's Cheerleaders, Dracula vs. Frankenstein, Hell's Bloody Devils, and I'm sure many other films that I should probably be watching right now. This guy's filmography is a gaping hole in my cinematic knowledge, a sopping wound in my bad movie experience, a pulsing yoni in my <laughs> just begging to be filled. So don't be surprised if a few more of his films turn up in my reviews. Because this film is terrible, I will not be kind, but Clark called his autobiography on the cheap, my life in low budget filmmaking. So I'm kind of inclined to like the guy. Almost no one goes out of their way to make a bad film, but those who do should be celebrated because they make the world a little more fun. Anyway, this stars a bunch of human-shaped wallpaper alongside low-budget movie legend Clue Gulliger from Return of the Living Dead, Alex Cord from Airwolf, and George Kennedy, who seems to be annoyed that they stopped making airport sequels. Hilariously, this isn't the only terrible low-budget 80s horror movie Kennedy did sit in about. In 1980, he did Death Ship, which is basically a non-sci-fi version of Event Horizon, even down to someone getting possessed with a ship and going nuts. But, I'm sure that's for another review. So we open with this, and that is less of an ident and more of a portent of things to come. It's a good thing too, or the audience when it got tricked for the first two credits. Luckily, no one ever assumed that an amazing movie was telling the truth. And Heritage Entertainments, be they Maypoles or Murder Cat movies, are always terrible. <laughs> The theme song is great though, it has that certain je ne sais quoi of Mako from the Disco Star Wars album, trying to do an album based on the Halloween movies. It kind of works. We are less than a minute in and they're already building tension by making sure we don't know what side of the screen the actors' names are going to come from. Okay, if that's the largest direction I see in a film with George Kennedy and a wet pussy, I'm going to be so angry. Also uninvited, saturation. This is the home of the evil Generacorp. They do things like take innocent murder kitties and implant them with killer tomatoes. You think it could be a teratoma? Never seen anything like this. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm actually a filmmaker. I'm currently making one called Uninvited. And the less science you put in that, the better. 
So yeah, this is the origin of the murder cat. He's been raised in a lab, used for all sorts of experiments, and injected with unnecessarily large syringes. God, go get it. Get- Paul, get the cat! Get him! Okay, I see that none of their many, many, many experiments were involved bathing a cat, or doing anything with a cat in a vet-like setting. Oh, uh, sir, we forgot to close the door again. C-618 has escaped. Use extreme caution. Radiation security. Oh, the cat's covered in that special radiation that can't get through wooden doors and doesn't hurt people who touch it. That's the most dangerous type. Anyway, the cat keeps meowing loudly as it tries to escape. Because how else could the poor security team keep track of its location in a stairwell? <laughs> You ever consider shaking a treat bag really loudly? Okay, that wouldn't help, but you know, the smell might help. The guy in silver's the smart one. He's dressed up as a ghost to save time when he's killed. <laughs> the cat's secret weapon is the evil cat inside it. Think of it like the xenomorph's inner jaw, but it ate Jones. It's somehow the same size slash larger than the outer cat, and it can leave any time it likes. Just like the cat carrying it. Poison gas danger in a car park? Either they badly need to unionize, or this is West Virginia. In which case, they badly need to unionize. The building's secure. Now, Paul, no matter what happens, we can't let that cat out of here. Dr. Gray, you saw what just happened at that stairwell. How? He wasn't there, and they seem to be just outside the lab, somehow controlling the door several floors below them. Oh wait, he's the director and they couldn't afford a second unit. To ram home the silliness of the line, they then cut to the car park as they enter it. So either they had that conversation and then they went down the stairwell, or they had the conversation after going down to the car park by a completely different route and then entered another door. Because if they went down the same way the cat did, this conversation should be taking place inside the stairwell. Give me your gun! You want me to stay here and guard the door? Because I could just close it and join in the search. I mean, I'd rather not. That score is really trying hard to make it sound ominous. Oh no! The director kept shooting at the wall where the cat wasn't for about five seconds after it ran off. Like, fuck, most of the time he just fails to shoot stuff with a camera. Why have you given your knees a POV shot? Now every time you try to do a cat POV shot, I'm gonna assume your legs have escaped. I love how the cat keeps giving its location away in the exact way that cats don't. By playing the same stock meow sound effects over and over. After all, cats rarely have access to sound libraries. If they did, their caterwauling would involve a lot more James Brown. <laughs> See, you, you probably should have just put a box down. Anyway, the cat manages to escape the lockdown, high-security, generic corp lab building with its poison gas and radiation security because it's a cat. I don't know what to tell you, that's the most realistic part of the film so far. As often happens, after a super-powered murder cat escapes a high-security building, we soon get enmeshed in the lives of two college girls. Who might be homeless, maybe. Don't even think about it, we cannot afford this hotel! Kind of explains the clothing, to be honest. These are Susie and Bobby, this is apparently Fort Lauderdale, and they arrive for spring break without a hotel room, or the money to rent one. Do you have any reservations here? Well, no, not exactly, I thought but so. my uncle well, I'm is sorry, a stockholder, But I'm sorry, but you cannot stay in this lobby without reservations. Well, I was- that was the second of their many, many mistakes in this film. The first is the hair. That's just a fire hazard. It's the 80s. Most people smoke like chimneys. I wouldn't be surprised if they had to replace the actors a couple of times with equally nondescript fake champs and no one noticed. I was just wondering if perhaps no, I'm sorry, but you'll have to minutes, find somewhere maybe. else to go. Now, please, get out. Get out. Wester. It's okay there with me. The mustachioed human doorstop is Alex Cord as Walter Graham. Part man, part oil slack. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I understand. I've been there. I might be able to help you with a place to stay. Red flag!
flags, the red flags here. I was just about to go in and have some dinner. Why don't you join me and we can talk about it. No strings attached. I just don't think we're dressed for dinner. Oh, you'll be fine. It's probably a strip club. I mean, look at the guy. Walters, one of your common or garden billionaire bastards. He made his money in Wall Street, and because he's a fucking idiot, just likes a thrill, or has a much deeper understanding of real life finances than the rest of his characterization indicates, he's also a crime boss. His main henchman is George Kennedy, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing about half the special effects budget went on sculpting what's left of his hair. The other henchman is Clue Golliger, playing a collection of random and consistent character quirks in a bad set. Or Orville Reckenbacher starring in Breaking Bad. Whichever's funnier. We've got to go now. See you in a little while. Goodbye, Mr. Graham. Oh, please, call me Walter. If you don't sound like an erotic rocking chair while you say it, you're pronouncing it wrong. Could you give me ten minutes more? You want to miss this appointment for a couple of bimbos? He'll wait. He's scared and he's desperate. Desperate men do desperate things. Like a greatest star and uninvited while he's waiting for the naked gun to be written. Desperate directors do desperate things, like try to make that cat shot sinister. You know, thinking about it, their clothing might be legitimately clever. Pre-ripped in case of cat. Anyway, on Walter's boat, he's got a meeting with a business associate, who's about 40% along the Tony Shell hoop to Paul Reiser character slider. It's called blackmail. You've heard the term? Of course. Never put yourself in a position where some idiot can blackmail you. But I'll do whatever you want. Die. I gotta say, I do not understand why anyone would drown someone in their jacuzzi while on a boat, surrounded by literally miles of dark, empty water. But then again, I'm not a crime lord slash finance guy. I drown people in molten sugar. Kennedy pulled a gun right beforehand, so either that was to show the guy that he wouldn't be getting away even if he escaped, or the guy was meant to get shot, but Clue Golliger just really wanted to get wet. And, and now he's traumatized by drowning the guy. Look at Albert. Look, look at him. He's gonna be sick. <laughs> So you feel like this is why City was made of random, inconsistent character quirks. Oh no, it looks like the Foley artiste was ill that day. Don't worry, movie, I'll fix it. Come here, kitty. That's a girl. Drink some milk. That's a good kid. Well, the cat's made a friend. I have to say, I applaud their restraint of not dubbing meows over eating. Perhaps his wrath can be assuaged after all. Hey! Ah! Ah! Give me the keys! Or not. Well, time for the cat to declare war on humanity all over again! <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you surgically implant a cat with a fizz gig. Lucky cat. They'd hold shit off a crockery for it to push you over when I got bored of the crash. Music badly needs a sitcom to be the worst part of. These bucket hat and color popping aficionados are some more of the victims, both of the cat and of the film itself. The careers of some of these actors is like a Ken Burns documentary. Quite long, but sad, and much less interesting than you'd hope. <laughs> they soon meet up with Susie and Bobby because this film is really excited for you to hate them in characters as much as the script does. You might remember them because every time you see them, they're slightly more naked. Hi. Mind if we sit down? Of course. Be our guest. Yeah, that's all the interaction they need, these four couples now. This is the straightest movie ever made, even down to the long, hard boat and the killer pussy. Oh, and this trio is the dictionary definition of be straight, do crimes. 
It's like someone tried to turn heterosexuality into a horror film. That horse bolted a long time ago. Hey, you guys! Oh, no. This is Martin, the last of the Spring Breakers. He's, he's kind of a fifth wheel and is treated like an annoying geek. Hello, ladies. Hi. But honestly, it's kind of freaky just to well the character is aged. With his dress sense, his beard, his hair, and his interest in nerd stuff, he feels like he should be reviewing this instead of me. You might be wondering where Susie and Bobby, with no hotel room, stayed last night. And frankly, so am I, but not enough to actually start to come up with theories. Honestly, they probably crashed in Walter's boat. They were invited to a party there after the meal. You are coming to the party, right? Starts about midnight on my yacht. Unfortunately, it was way too exclusive for people like the audience to attend. So they kept it off screen and just mentioned it occasionally to try and trick us into thinking the film could afford party guests. And uh, Albert, the party is in about an hour and a half. So after you've cleaned up this mess here, get everything ready. Ooh, check this place out. Whoa, it must have been some party, huh? Yeah, well, Mr. Graham loves to party. <laughs> well, then it can't be all that bad, huh? <laughs> Anyway, Lance, the nervous system piloting a perm, is excited to hear about Walter. Yeah. Oh, wait, are you talking about Wall Street Walter? I mean, this guy is the best arbitrageur in the world. Dude, he is like the airwolf of Walter Street. I mean, he's made more millions on Wall Street than anybody. You should see this boat. I don't know much about the average size of millionaires' yachts in the late 80s, but I'm assuming that any this film could afford is probably the less impressive variety. Which honestly kind of fits in well with the mise-en-scene of the film. But I suppose it could be a David Dakota thing where they got this expensive location and they keep using it as a backdrop for shirtless men. Anyway, through a mix of promises of sex, promises of meeting Walter, and promises of being in the rest of the film, the three guys are convinced to join the duo on the boat. You see, Walter's heading for Grand Cayman for some more business. It's only marginally more illegal than what he does in Wall Street. Damn it, the girls aren't on board. Good. Let's get the hell out of here before they come back. Don't you think two pretty girls on a cruise makes a good cover? I gotta say, I kind of love that they paid George Kennedy just to hate everything that happens in this film. I don't like you. I don't like punk kids that think the world owes them a living. Now, if these punks can help us run this boat, then we need them. All right, just keep them the hell away from me. I hate punks like those guys. We need the girls on board. Young broads are a pain in the ass. Ask her to use more lube, George. What's the brand is? Well, sure, I've heard of them, but so he's made a lot of money. So what? So what? Are you... This guy has been on the cover of Forbes magazine twice. Uh, he's just a man. Sounds like they got a mini jukebox in one of their bags and it's playing the theme song in a loop. Shh, you guys hear that? <coughs> uh, guys, I think someone's playing cat sound effects at us. <coughs> I would wonder how it got in there, but it's a box and the cat is very tenacious. Look starved, oh- No, it looks like it killed and ate a much larger and angrier cat. <coughs> Genetic laboratory. This must be a lab animal, must have gotten away. Must have broken back in and stolen the collar because it didn't have one when it escaped. Anyway, with that, she declares that the cat's coming with her, regardless of how the cat feels about it. I'm taking my little baby with me. Motherfucker's trying to escape the film harder than George Kennedy's agent. So, how is my captain this morning? Oh, captain, you're captain. It'd be a lot better if we hadn't lost an entire crew. You mean you still haven't replaced them? Ah, uh, the perils of low-budget aquatic filmmaking. Okay, so I got a little drunk and mouthed off to the crew. I apologize. Well, she is all that's left of the crew, so well-aimed. This party is sounding more and more like the only interesting thing to happen since the cat last ate someone. It's symbolic of the film, though. You're not allowed to have too good a time. But it is my boat. So it is. And if you don't like that, honey, you're free to leave any time. Walter's desperate to get going because he needs to do some important crimes abroad. And he's antagonizing the captain because he drove the rest of the crew away. It's almost as bad as it could possibly be and he's actively trying to make it worse. You're free to leave any time. Luckily for him, the captain's much too dedicated to making the plot eventually happen. And let you ruin her before I have a chance to get her back? If you really want the damn boat back, all you have to do is ask. I can be a very generous man with people who just treat me right. 
Can't warn anyone from making a tragic mistake without a red flag. Just think about it. What's going on here, Mike? An aquatic version of the Big Red Seinfeld meme. Mr. Graham, I was just telling your associate here that I'm a great admirer of yours. You are the greatest. <laughs> No, I'm not. Just wait till you see me make decisions. Well, thank you, but I'm sorry. You're gonna have to leave anyway. And how appropriate, here comes the shuttle right now. Grab! 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 What is it? I just want to confirm that's still your name, boss. No, he's arrived back with news that the law is on their trail. I just got word the SCC is getting a warrant to search your boat. They have to get going now, and any cat murders at sea needs to be kept to a minimum. Captain! Take us out to sea right now, please. Without a crew? You must be joking. Luckily, because a crew apparently doesn't do much except be the cast of a terrible 80 sex comedy transplanted post-mortem into a horror film, they have an idea. Look, Walter, you've got three able-bodied men here, plus Suzanne and I can help. That's crewmen that you don't even have to pay. I love that just before the suggestion we were concentrating on this guy, looking like it was building up to trying to have an idea one day, and then BAM! She makes a suggestion. Apparently to remind us she exists. Besides, we'll all have some fun, what do you say? I say, that sounds like a Skidamax flick. So, yes. Alright everybody, come on, let's move it! No, it's mine. You know, I, I heard a cat on board a ship is supposed to be good luck. Oh, please, Walter. I promise this darling little kitty won't be any trouble. I won't her face be red. Oh, wait, that'll be the blood. Okay, keep the damn thing. But you owe me one, Suzanne. Might be a bit of semen, too. Big red flags! Oh, check this place out. Whoa, it must have been some party, huh? Yeah. There really should be more cocaine about. It was. It's like kung fu movie dubbing with the stars on painkillers. So, about a quarter of the average Jackie Chan film. Wow. It sounds like a mashup of all the songs I couldn't afford to use. <laughs> Your pussy had some food. <laughs> She will fetch it, but as a fuck you, she'll only bring it back by shitting in your hat. Anyway, we seem to have wandered into a David Attenborough documentary about the mating habits of suburbanites. That's just depressing. Self-pity is not a good habit to get into, kid. Tell that to George Kennedy. He seems to be comfort-eating it. I don't like you. I don't like punk kids that think the world owes them a living. Anyway, if the kids are going to be crew, then they need to act like it. Briefly, once or twice on screen, maybe, if they remember. You're the busboy and the dishwasher. You're the maid. He is desperately hoping the outfit doesn't awaken anything in him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing they don't often do any of these things, because I have no idea who's meant to be doing what. Yeah, well, you can go whoa, take a flying... Just a minute there. Now, he's right. Mr. Graham is the boss. Hey, whose side are you on? Our prospective sugar daddies. Who the fuck do you think? Now, Walter, you just leave all the petty stuff to me. I'm sure you've got much more important matters to attend to. Okay, guys? We can get this place cleaned up in no time, huh? Now you must be the smart one. As long as you grade them on a curve. Okay, Walter's plan is simple. Get to sea before the cops arrive and make it to the Caymans before Monday. So he can empty his bank account there before word of the arrest warrant reaches them. It's time we throw in our cards, take our winnings, and get the hell out of town. Then they take all his cash and sail somewhere without an extradition treaty with the USA. Today's only Friday. We're there first thing Monday morning. We get the cash, then we go buy a country in South America. Not sure why they couldn't fax the arrest warrant over the weekend, but this film thinks that regular cats can vomit up larger mutant cats. Either against all odds it knows what it's talking about, or you probably shouldn't correct that. You gotta loosen up a bit, man. You realize how much money we're gonna be taking out of that bank? You're gonna be richer than your wildest dreams. His wildest dream is clearly not having to star in this film. Little, little, you're a rich man. 
maybe if I see them more, I'll just melt through the deck. <laughs> So the cat's trying and failing to learn Morse code. Anyway, the cat's exploring the engine room, enjoying the acoustics, having no effect on his meows. <coughs> when Clue Golliger's Albert develops his latest quirk, flailing around and hitting random levers on the bridge. <laughs> It's like watching The Lion King give birth to the live-action remake. You gotta admire a film that gives so few fucks about how and why stuff happens that they actually typed, Cat got so scared by an engine that it vomited itself up and smacked it to death. And no one made them go back and change it. I'm fine with this. More time spent on shit like that means we spend less time on dialogue like this. Let's make the best of it. This isn't so bad. I mean, we're working on a fantastic yacht. We're sailing on the Caribbean. This is how real adventure begins. You know, I kind of feel like they should start adding modern references to future guys' lines. Just so the rest of them have a reason to be amused by him. I feel like- Viggo Mortensen! <laughs> <laughs> Hedgeworth, you're weird. <laughs> Almost as weird as washing leftovers in the sink. At least this is a good indication that the same guy wrote the whole scrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I sure do feel sorry for you boys, having to work so hard in this very hot kitchen. I don't know how you can stand it. It's really hot. It's not often you see them getting slightly more naked in real time. That usually happens between scenes, or when they're being cast. You see, boys, getting mixed up with us wasn't such a bad idea after all. All your hard work will have its rewards, I promise. It is so hot. If dialogue is spoken aloud, but everyone in the scene is literally brainless, is it still diegetic? Oh man, this just isn't poggers. Boy, I gotta tell you, I will even make out with the captain, that's what he said. Yeah, the captain, and he leaves me all alone here while he goes out and having his fun. You know, it took me ages to work out what Clue Golger's performance reminds me of. Jim Sido from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Small businessman always, always, always gets it in the ass! Trying to play Ben Stein. That would be terrible. <laughs> it's kind of short-lived, though. He also looks drunk all the time, so he raids a liquor cabinet to keep up appearances. Ah! <coughs> Albert. And later on, he'll kill himself by a cat. But first, the most impressively on screen are the film's parties. No cocaine, but most of the rest of the cast are perched awkwardly around Walter, in exactly the way that birds might be, but humans definitely aren't. <laughs> I looked him straight in the eye, and I said, no. <laughs> Christ, it's like MTV unplugged its stand-up shows. Anyway, the cat wanders in and is so horrified by Eddie's food that he can't even meow. We walk, but not before we got 25 million. <laughs> <laughs> You're different than your two friends. Indeed, he's sitting like a human. You're different than your two friends. Yeah, I'm from the future. Lance is a jock, he's got a free ride. Wrestling, he's pretty good. What about yourself? I'm gonna bet in his matches. And don't you run away from mama anymore. I have something very important to say, but first... Where was I? Now, Suzanne, you remember our deal. You keep that cat away from me. Or I'll give it a swimming lesson. <laughs> oh, it's just a sweet little thing. I am such a pushover. <laughs> Stop giving it close ups. You're just making the movie funnier. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do you prefer the company of this him to me? Hmm? Because he's the pip and she has great expectations of the relationship. He has brains. Also, he's not a tiny Moa statue. We're in the contents of a disguise cat. Anyway, that's sorted. Time to dance. They're high.
hanging out, hanging out, hanging out with the family, having themselves a party. Okay, that reaction was deserved. Tammy Faye, baby, this is for you. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Oh god, he's trying to be funny. This sort of thing isn't Clue Golger's usual shtick in my experience. He was a straight man, a eternal living dead for fuck's sake. I thought you said if we destroyed the brain and die. It worked in the movie! Well, it ain't working now, Frank. You mean the movie line? I wonder if this is a Brent Spiner thing where he put it into his contract that he gets to try and be funny every so often. Captain Albert, at your service, baby. You are drunk. You are right. To be fair, getting drunk is probably the most explicable thing in the film, other than the terrible fucking dancing, and finding the cat in yet another box. Huh? <laughs> 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 you want some of this sweet little pussy? <laughs> <laughs> you fool, now he's a taste for wine. Human wine. Vintage 1928. <laughs> Man, cat scratch fever is no joke. Never listen to Ted Nugent, kids. <laughs> he died doing what he loved, getting his beak wet. Anyway, Walters had enough of being a potential sugar daddy and wants to give being a sugar creepy uncle a go. Mm -hmm. Time to get lost, kids. What I want to know is what sort of famous billionaire crime boss slash Wall Street scumbag with his own muscle who's in his own private boat in the middle of the ocean and plans to escape where the law can't get him needs to get drunk to come on to someone. He should be offering her thousands of dollars to let him come on to her. The answer, of course, is the sort of famous billionaire crime boss slash Wall Street scumbag who thought that jumper was a sound investment. It's like a two-dimensional version of the one Chris Evans wore knives out. Just like the rest of him. Come with me. Kennedy has found some blood and deduced that Clue went overboard during the party. Obviously, they should turn around and try and find him, but understandably, they both kind of prefer a pile of money and not going to prison over saving him. Look, I say we just get out of here and we didn't see anything, okay? Nothing's gonna keep me from getting to the Caymans. Us! We're on the same boat together, remember? That shot's just the editing equivalent of an exclamation mark. Anyway, let's over there is sake that no one notices he's gone. Looks like Albert fell overboard last night. What? No! Walter, George Kennedy, you're supposed to pretend you didn't see anything after you clean up the evidence. Christ, I wouldn't be surprised if someone finds the guy they murdered, cleverly hidden in the hot tub. Okay, hidden in their secondary secret murder hot tub. You like lead. <laughs> Yeah, he's a real stud. This anti-Bechdel test of a scene makes it look like their minds are being moderately blown by being in water, on a boat, in water, and they're wet. <laughs> anyway, ever the stylish film, we're done in the hold, and we have some reused footage that goes brilliantly with the reused meows. <laughs> in other news, Walter's come up with a foolproof plan to stop the captain from turning back. Transfer of ownership papers? In your name. All legit, and at a price you can manage. Sad for him that she's one of the few not fools in the film. I'm not trading a man's life for a boat. You know, you could vastly improve her chances of taking it if you just offered it to her. But nah, this is one of those times when he's being a rich bastard kind of realistically. Besides, the last place anyone saw Clue Golger alive was on the boat while she was captaining at. At least if you gave it to her, she could sell it to pay the legal fees. Risking their lives for a body that they ain't gonna find. You can't be certain of that. Yes, I can. Albert couldn't swim. Is that true? I'm afraid so. Sounds like they dubbed each shot into a different dialect of wind. It's really distracting. You'd think that if anyone would understand the value in ADRing a scene, it'd be the people who made this. <sighs> I'll do it. Again. They don't 
go back. Apparently, she was a fool after all. I'll have to make a record, my love. Well, of course. I would expect no less. Holy crap, Future Guy is looking even more modern than usual. He looks like he's gonna try and make her listen to a bunch of bands that he's never heard of. Did you have a sextant? That's one of the bands. Martin, a sextant's used for navigation. I know, I just wanna try it out for something else here. He's actually a genius and wants to turn it into a makeshift microscope to check Clue's blood. You see, they all assume he tripped, hit his head, and went overboard, and Future Guy, true to his name because I assume he watched the film, randomly decides to take a closer look at his blood. Look. What is it? There's no evidence that he was murdered, no one thinks there's anything up with the blood. He just decides that he needs to look at it and discovers that, ominously, it has more blood cells than usual. Blood cells. This is a hundred, maybe even a, a thousand times normal, even for fresh blood. Oh no! He died of reverse AIDS! It also seems to have a tad more hair than most blood cells. And what makes this even randomer is that he didn't even bring some of the blood from where Clue died. He found a bloody handkerchief that he thinks might be his. Does this look like it could be Albert's? Doesn't get confirmation that it is. Could be, why? And then checks the blood. And apart from all this, he's using a fucking sextant as a microscope. So all this depends on it A, working, and B, being fucking possible at all. Very good movie. Long, but nonsensical. But if this film understood how things happen or why people do what they do, this film wouldn't exist. So it feels unfair to pick on that scene. Let's pick on this one instead. Uh -huh. Meow, 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 meow. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but um, am I being paid for this? Mistress says you're getting paid in Purina. Oh, fantastic. I love Italian food. I think you're better than Jane Fonda. Yeah, well, I think you sound distracting like Zap Brannigan. What I love about this scene is that the Foley person randomly decided to turn the cat into a furry little rape alarm in the background. <laughs> and this is nothing. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Bobby. It's the little things, you know. Like what he currently is jammed up against her back. Cause I'm getting real tired of you girls leaving me on. So in the space of about 15 seconds, Walter decides to rape her. <laughs> Walter, now don't be stupid! The cat is so aghast that his dubbing actually matches. Now on, you gonna play it my way? With... Captain Bucket Hat interrupts. Hey, what the hell are you doing? There's a fight. Stop it! And George Kennedy is so pissed off that he wanders in and shoots the first person he sees. Boy, that escalated quickly. Well, to be fair, he's wanted to kill someone all decade. No, you can't! Just watch me. Wait, wait, hold it! So, how do they top having the NPCs literally spawning at the door? The good old-fashioned boggling attack. Well, not a good old-fashioned Boglin attack. A pretty crap one, and Boglins were new in the market when they made this. It's a kind of a bad, newfangled Boglin attack. Fractal shot glasses. You know. I think violence is just how he communicates. <laughs> Sorry for racing a mile a minute. Yeah, being a newly mauled fat guy in his 60s, he just had a fight scene, he'll do that. What happened to him? He just went nuts. I've never seen anything like this. It's not like him. Uh, Walter, when did you first forget to notice the crippling amnesia? The captain decides to radio for medical assistance, and Walter politely disagrees. What are you doing? I said put the damn radio down! Are you crazy? He could just suggest that they keep moving and that dropping the injured at the nearest town would be quicker than waiting for someone to find them, arrive, and take the injured to a hospital. But Walter never made a high-stakes decision he couldn't fuck up. And you want that boat or not? Not with this much blood on it. Mayday, mayday, this is the... Okay, this is just getting catty. Now start the engine and get us headed for the Caymans. I'm not taking this boat anywhere. You know, they, they have hospitals in the Cayman Islands. I mean, I figured they probably did, but I looked it up. But the engines are kind of fucked from the catter mauling it got earlier. So that's kind of immaterial. Much like Susie slash Bobby here's out fat. 
Long story short, Walter threatens to shoot Susie slash Bobby. Then I'll just blow her head off. The captain blasts Walter with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> and Walter's threatened with being yittered. Keep the gun on the scumbag, but if he moves, blow his balls off. On the other hand, George Kennedy's doing well. His foot looks like an expensive novelty cake. As near as I can tell, the cat that bit Mr. Harvey is highly poisonous. <laughs> A poisonous cat. Now, how's that possible? Maybe ask all the regular non-poisonous cats who hospitalize people with their septicemia bites. Anyway, in the party room, everyone's talking about what they know. It doesn't take long. Future guy explains the blood from earlier, holding up a sextant for emphasis. This was a mutation. Bobby slash Susie explains that she might have seen something, but she doesn't know. I don't know. It didn't look like the cat, but it had to be. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I mean... That is not how the rule of three works. I don't know. Did it look like a normal cat to you before, Suzanne? And George Kennedy is wondering whether discussing all this right next to him while he's trying to die in pace. Oh. God help me. All I know for sure is that the blood cells in Mike's body are multiplying at a phenomenal rate. Somehow he's been poisoned. Yeah, all that looks like a textbook case of poisoning. Also, future guy, before you come back in time again, try googling the word venomous. For fuck's sake, you're meant to be a doctor. Me? I'm a biologist. I'm a year away from my doctorate. Slash chef. I hope one of you boys can cook because, um, we can't. Not to worry, I can cook. Slash forensic tank. And you think this is Albert's blood? Don't you. Slash yacht repairman. No, no, I have a previous engagement to become a master mechanic. God. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah, so that's what a depressed chest burst would look like. Kind of surprised that didn't turn up in Alien vs. Predator, to be honest. Oh. And like Lord Franklin, who he so physically resembled, George Kennedy's body was sent to the great airport at the bottom of the sea. Where no disasters will interrupt his rest. Note, uh, we don't actually know what happens to John Franklin's body. I'm not referencing a new historical discovery in the horrific tapestry that is the Franklin Expedition. I'm just being silly. Okay, I'm not convinced that two of these guys could so effortlessly throw him overboard. Unless he was very full of shit. And they're gonna have to air out the boat for the rest of the film. What's gonna happen to us? We're gonna survive. We're gonna get this boat started and we're gonna survive. Who died and made you wrong? George Kennedy, mistress. Uh, touche. So Walter is getting imprisoned. Is this really necessary? Shut up. Probably not, seeing as he wasn't at the funeral and didn't even try to run off with a lifeboat. Well, everyone else talked about a swell guy George Kennedy was. It was a eulogy of fat jokes. Really inappropriate. It's a quiet night. The cat's not even meowing. Feels kind of wrong, to be honest. Meow. I'm really not sure if better is the right word, but... It'll do. Anyway, future guy is using his previously unmentioned doctorate in yacht repair to assist the captain. While well, Bucket Hat and Bobby slash Susie get freaked out by shoes. And this twerp has been bought up by Walter. Always wanted one of these. Keep it. What? What are you, deaf as well as dumb? Go ahead, take it. I've got a drawer full of them. I know I'm a big fan of yours and you're famous for being rich and we're on your boat, but dang, I am somehow shocked to find out that you're rich. How much is that? One million American dollars. You help me get to my bank in the Cayman Islands without any more hassles, and you'll be using that <laughs> for pocket change. And in between helping the captain repair the engine with his advanced fiddling with stuff technique, Future Guy uses his skills and never being wrong to work out like another problem. Contamination. So? So? It means that any food the cat comes in contact with becomes contaminated. This sounds serious. Unfortunately, I have a memory and notice all the piles of food out, the cat wandering around everywhere being held, and no one dying mysteriously. You know, you could have had people dying after touching the cat to kickstart Future Guy's investigation, but nah, instead it's a series of events, random events, many of which don't logically follow each other. No well, movie two can play at that game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey, when's the worst time to get an erection? I don't know. When is the worst time to get an erection? When being crowned Miss World? Ah! <laughs> that joke is so problematic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
see a movie, it's not so nice when I do it. Yeah, but the food's all locked up, right? Yes, it's safe. Cat's gonna get awful hungry. What are you trying to say, Martin? It means that hopefully Diogenes was right and you're all a bunch of big naked chickens. Meow. Meow. Oh no. Oh no. The ADR somehow got worse. Go away, please. <sighs> Ain't nothing here but us killing pussycats. Like the Beatles, these fuckers are dying in the wrong order. Well, you almost scared me to death. Come on, what are you scared of, a little cat? Yeah, you're damn right I am. If you were smart, you would be too. They decide to have sex. It makes sense from her perspective. He is a bigger target. If you really want to be protected, you're going to be smart to stick by me no matter what happens from here on in. Everyone in this film has a singular mode. Horny, funny, in quotation marks, angry, scumbag, anachronistic, dumbass, and captain. You might have noticed that I missed one of the characters, and that's fine. They forgot to give her any characteristics. Except, bewildering choice in men, maybe? And the way the repair situations got even worse. Two days stranded. Damn it, do you think we'd find something out here? No, the audio's broken. But first things first, the engines. <laughs> Damn it, I just don't have the parts! At least you fix the sound. Oh, that'll teach you to pray. I thought I was gonna start this time. Yeah, me too. So how's your shoulder, huh? Lost all the feeling in my arm. Yeah, I wouldn't worry. Nerve death is usually a good sign that you're healing up. Plus, it'll be great for maximizing his wanking potential. Well, I know something that'll help. Synth music is very healing. I kind of expected the cat to be hiding under a shirt, to be honest. Well, that's pretty good, too. Nom 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 nom, motherfuckers! Old meme coming in. Can I has cheesy bastard burger? <laughs> You can move it again. That's something. Just clean the wound and maybe it'll be fine. No! No! Adult water to clean the wound, enough to dilute the poison, and more than enough to drown in. That's just killing three birds with one ocean. Four if you count her. Anyway, regardless of the attempted heroism, Bobby slash Susie there never resurfaces. as. Uh, anything to try and escape the film? Why the fuck didn't I think of that? Seriously though, maybe she got confused and swam downwards by mistake? Maybe she was weighed down by the hairspray. Or, most likely, they heroically landed on her head. That night, things are looking bleak. They're wearing the towels of mourning. Supplies are getting low, and Susie slash Bonnie is turned into Lucy Lawless having a breakdown. <laughs> that thing's gonna bite us! And we're all gonna die a horrible death! <laughs> her official mode is now freaking out. Listen, you bitch, if you had to front that yeah, car, yeah. sorry! And his is breaking up with her. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! They've all got jobs now. Hers is to keep an eye out for planes and ships. And we need you keeping a watch out for planes or ships. And try to work out which ones are hallucinations. While well, future guy and the captain keep working on the engine and Walter and his little trained minion search the ship for the cat for the purposes of dying. This section actually is one of the best moments in the film. She found the cat, she claimed it, she brought the cat on board, she demanded it come with her, so this is guilt driving her mad. And Future Guy backed her up. You know, I, I heard a cat on board a ship is supposed to be good luck. So she blames him for everything. You said it was good luck to bring a cat on board. That's right, I did. And it's your fault that cat's here, it's not mine. And he accepts it to try and keep her focused. You're right, you're right. But I still need you to stay on watch. That is a really good moment in a film full of bad ones. Bad ones, like the floppy-haired genius putting pieces of the cat fiddle over the engine room and handing Walter the gun so we can cover him. Yeah, I trust you, Mr. Grimm. Curse your likely upcoming sudden but inevitable betrayal. Just the smell of that stuff is making me salivate. I'm a cat foot aficionado. Purina is the good stuff. Yeah, you know how much poison I put in it. You'd lose your appetite, but quick. I realize this isn't how it works in real life, but this is a really stupid film, so who knows. 
Maybe the cat's immune to poison because it's so poisonous slash venomous slash monotonous. Or, no, the film's even stupider than I thought. Cannot the food poison. Almost as stupid as this guy. In case of emergency, break face. This is just a microcosm for the boat trip itself. Ever escalating violent stupidity, and most of the time people end up killing themselves. <laughs> Maybe you should have poisoned the body and left it down there for the cat to eat. That way it wouldn't have got so hungry that it ate through a wall and got into the pantry. How the hell did that thing get in here? It's lined with metal. So your rationing is pretty much done. That's what you say. You and Rachel are just horning it all for yourselves. Don't be ridiculous. Anyway, Susie slash Bobby has an idea, an even better idea than starvation, going down there and eating all the poisoned fat. Go out in a blaze of gory. <laughs> In case you're giving track, that's Cat 2, Human Stupidity 4. This film really subverts your expectations. It sets up the poisoned cat food and then someone gets poisoned by eating literally everything else. It's like Ryan Johnson threw himself down a staircase, brain first. Even the cat looks fucking bemused. Anyway, it never rains, it pours. Because that shot that was fired in a cramped space next to the hull? No, not that one. Or that one. Yeah, that one. It's gonna sink the ship. But what are we gonna do? You've gotta fix that! Apparently, they went in there, found the turf's body, wrapped it in a sheet, brought it up to throw overboard, and never once noticed the fucking lake! And it didn't even wash any of the poison off the food! Storm or no storm, there's nothing to do but get into a lifeboat. Fun fact, I didn't put this clip in earlier, but this is what the captain said when Walter suggested leaving the yacht and taking the lifeboat instead. Our only chance is to stay with the ship and to get it going. Then maybe someone will spot us. His one good decision and you fucking ignored it. Anyway, Walter, the king of obviously bad decisions, is back on form and goes back to his room to save a few more suitcases full of cash. <laughs> That cat's me as a proximity warning. Like a truck backing up. <laughs> Clearly, the cat wasn't impressed with the quality of Walter's on shit mashed potatoes. Everybody knows that you love mashed potatoes! More importantly, so is the scale model of the ship in the hot tub. So they're rich now. We must see a million dollars in here! And have to buy a new boat! If Walter's wealth is to be believed, probably a much smaller one. Yeah! But they forgot one thing, the cats hate water. Figuring that it won't leave them alone while they're the only thing floating. Don't leave us alone as long as we're the only floating object! They empty out all the heavy money from the case and chuck at, freeing them and the monster to follow their passions in life. The captain of future guys, love of miming rowing in a homemade Universal Studios Titanic ride, and the monster's love of perching in water like a sad Muppet. And we're done. Or are we? No, because the monster made it to land and somehow grew another cat for the sequel hook. Oh, don't touch that. You don't know where that kid's been. That was uninvited, often fucking hilarious, occasionally boring as fuck, always fucking ridiculous, and once or twice, just fucking. It really needs to be seen and heard, preferably both, to be believed. If you want to watch the best Monster Cat in a Boat film, then there might be a better one out there, I don't know. But I've never heard of that. I'm the Amanda Hog, and I have to live with that every day.
it's another fucking day It's the best day ever again Cause I'm a stupid fucking cat and I don't know shit And I don't know what it is to be sad I think I'll run around for no good reason And act like there's stuff I gotta do I have no idea how much the world sucks Cause I have no reference level Holy hell, that guy's bringing me food This food sucks, but I don't even know it Now I'm shitting in a box cause I don't give a fuck And the guy throws it out for me Now I think I'll lie down here Now I think I'll lie down here Cause I got no fucking bills to pay Sometimes I look out windows cause I'm stupid as hell Holy Christ, it's a piece of paper I have no idea how pointless I am And I don't even know I'm gonna die Now it's time to go to bed Gotta get some fucking rest cause it's the best day ever tomorrow